Hey there, my name is Matt Pasoka. I'm the technical editor at Bella News Magazine, and uh, we've been working on a couple segments of uh, packing bikes. Uh, today we're going to put this uh, full suspension mountain bike into this uh, hard case from Trico Sports. This is my personal uh, bike case, and I've had it for over 10 years. Um, hard cases uh, have uh, a couple advantages. Uh, in that 10 years, I've never had a bike be damaged in this case, uh, but it is tougher to lug around the airport. Uh, it's something you might want to think about if you do a lot of traveling and you have a, a lot of other bags with you. Uh, there's a couple considerations with a mountain bike, especially one like this with uh, almost five inches of travel front and rear. Um, and then also uh, we use some different tools and supplies uh, to pack a mountain bike up than we would uh, our road bike. So uh, let's look at the tools and supplies we'll need to get this bike into this box. As with packing a road bike, uh, as we did in another segment, um, we want to make sure that we're going to have all the tools that we're going to need to put our bike back together when we get to our destination. Uh, that said, these bikes can be uh, taken apart and reassembled using uh, small multi-tools. A um, couple considerations, as with a road bike, you're probably going to want a longer Allen wrench for a little extra leverage when you're taking your pedals off and putting them on. And then with this bike, um, it's disc brake equipped and uh, it actually has Shimano's Semilock rotors. Disc rotors and travel don't necessarily go so well together, so we're actually going to use this uh, cassette tool to take our Semilock rotors off and ensure that they're not bent during travel. We'll have axle spacers for front and rear um, with the Trico case. Uh, there's no mount inside of it for the bike, so we do need a front axle spacer as well. You can get those at your bike shop too. There, there's two types though. Um, this is a hard plastic one, and this would work adequately. We'd want to tape it in. Um, but sometimes forks come with these rubber ones, and this is definitely not going to help your bike uh, keep from getting damaged. So definitely don't use these. Uh, another thing with a disc brake equipped bike that we're going to want are uh, brake pad spacers. This will prevent the um, brake levers from being pulled and the pistons staying out uh, during travel. Uh, so we'll want those. And the last thing uh, that differs from a road bike is uh, a shock pump. With uh, especially longer travel bikes, we may need to compress the suspension travel uh, to get the bike into the carrier. We can do that, but we gotta make sure that we have a shock pump to pump it back up on the other end. Uh, another thing to note, uh, if you do do that, is to make sure you know your shock uh, pressure settings and whatnot so you can get it right back to where you had it. Uh, then of course a mini pump and uh, rags or towels uh, are always good. Um, foam insulation or, or foam uh, padding. This uh, came from a bike manufacturer when they sent the bike in new, but you can also use uh, foam padding from a hardware store and then uh, some bubble wrap, plastic bag, that sort of stuff will also be helpful. The first step is to obviously open the bike box. This is definitely a good time to inspect the box, look for cracks, and make sure all the components of the travel case are in good shape and don't need repair of any sort. In the plastic box, there are three pieces of foam. You're gonna wanna remove all but one, leave the last piece of foam in the bottom of the case. First step for the bike's disassembly is taking the wheels off. With the wheels out, you're going to want to insert the pad spacers into the disc brake calipers. You want to do this both front and rear. The next step is going to be to insert the axle spacers so that the frame isn't crushed in shipping. Next, you'll want to remove the pedals. For the cockpit on a mountain bike, I like to take all of the controls off. This can be easily done with a mechanical lock-on grip. Doing this takes a little extra time, but it prevents any kinks in the cable or the possibility of rupturing a hydraulic brake line. The bars themselves need to be removed. Before I remove the bars, I mark them with a a uh, permanent marker or even a paint pen um, so that it's, they can be easily reinstalled to the same position. The rear derailleur must be removed. 
to prevent bending of either the derailleur or the derailleur hanger on the frame. I also like to remove the rear derailleur cable from its cable stop. This further prevents kinking of the brake cable. The disc brake caliper should also be removed, especially if it contacts any edge of the case. Also, if it sticks out in a weird angle, it does leave it open to being bent. Uh, I rethread the bolts into the brake caliper so they're not lost in shipping. Cover the frame with foam, pipe insulation, or bubble wrap to protect the tubes. I don't remove the stem. It acts to keep the headset together and prevents any damage to the headset or the head tube of the frame itself. The stem can be loosened and pivoted to lay flat, but again, don't remove it. Seat can be removed, but if it fits, I like to drop it and leave it in the frame. This also helps secure the bike in the box itself. Lay the bike flat on the non-drive side in the box. Carefully place the shifters chain and brake calipers so there is no metal on metal contact. Use extra packing materials to pad the components. Wrap the handlebars and the seat posts if you decided to remove it in bubble wrap. Fit the pieces together like a puzzle. The tighter it's packed, the better. But remember to prevent any metal on metal contact. Use soft goods like shoes and camelbacks to further fill space and pad the bike. I do not like to pack my bike helmet in the bike box. Helmets are very delicate and I always carry mine onto the plane. Remove the wheel skewers and disc brake rotors. The extra time taken is well worth it to prevent bent rotors. You'll likely appreciate Shimano's center lock technology if you have it on your bike. Again, attach the lock rings back to the wheels so that you have them readily accessible at your destination. Pack the rotors, skewers, and your pedals carefully using extra packing materials. I like to place the complete package under the foam below the frame. Place a second piece of foam over the frame. Place your wheels on top of that piece of foam and make sure to face the cassette outwards, not towards the frame. Place the last piece of foam over your wheels and then place the cover on your box. Don't be afraid to use ample pressure to close the box. The bike beds into the foam and the box bottoms out on itself. So if the bike's packed properly and has the axle spacers secured, it will not be damaged. Strap it up and you're done. Happy travels and thanks for watching.